see everybody, folks. How are you? Let me see who's on here today, folks. Bonnie, Stephanie from Montreal, Quebec, Ellen, Charity, Audrey, Carl, Moraine. Hi, Moraine. Carl, Cindy from Motown. Good to see you again, Cindy. Greetings from Detroit area. Marty, Marty, Carl from Texas. Terry from Vancouver. Good to see you again, Terry. Moraine, spending two weeks in Ireland in September, starting in Dublin. Look me up, Moraine. I'll give you, I'll put my card on here so you can uh, give me a shout when you come. You'll have a great time. Although you're lucky you're not coming right now at this time because it's bloody cold. Very, very cold. Very windy and rainy. It rained most of the day today. Hi, Cindy. Ellen from Stratford. Good to see you again. Karen from Texas. Good to see you. Pam and Eli, the cat from Phoenix. Great to see you. Ava, Deborah, Karen or Welcome, everybody. Hope you're all. Mark, how are you? Karen A. I have your card. We'll call. Okay, great stuff, Moraine. Appreciate it. Paula, how are you? Shelly. So welcome, folks, here. We're uh, in the beautiful village, leafy neighborhood of Ballsbridge. It's the number one postal address or the most exclusive real estate in all of Ireland. And, of course, the most expensive real estate in Dublin as well. Starting prices for homes around here would be one to two million. And upwards, there's some absolutely beautiful streets. Gregory, how you doing? Good to see you. Gregory, of course, is a local. He'll tell you how uh, Balls Bridge, how expensive it is to live here and how much the homes would go for here. Very, very expensive. Now, we're not going to take you around too many of the big expensive streets because they're off the beaten track from the main area of the village. But we're going to be concentrating more of the Balls Bridge village. And we'll also take you into a lovely uh, park called Herbert Park. It's absolutely lovely, beautiful park. So uh, lots of interesting places in the park. And then we'll take you to a couple of embassies, an old uh, Presbyterian church, Shelburne Road, and then the Aviva Stadium, Lansdowne Road Stadium. And uh, of course, the RDS, Royal Dublin Society. And that's where we'll be starting today. We've just got about 49 seconds. As you can see, the wind from the street, just blowing like crazy. It's really, really windy out. And it's because of this wind, it's making it very, very cold. Even though it's about 10 degrees Celsius, probably about 50 Fahrenheit, it doesn't feel anything near that. It feels like 35, 36 degrees because it's windy and it's cold. And we just hope it doesn't rain and it looks like it's going to because I can see some rain clouds. It's been raining on and off all day. And... Uh, for the last hour and a half, it hasn't been raining. And just our look, looks like it's going to start raining again. I see the rain clouds coming up. So that's unfortunate, but what can you do? You've got to take the good with the bad. Now, when it rained earlier, it seriously rained really heavy. So I think we're in for our rain spill today, folks, during this tour, because it's all getting uh, cloudy above. So, folks, welcome to... Balls Bridge, and we're going to start the tour right now. Balls Bridge, population here is 16,749 people. Most expensive real estate in Ireland. It's a leafy neighborhood. Dublin's most exclusive address, known as D4. And there's 47 restaurants in uh, Balls Bridge, and there's 14 bars. We'll show you the biggest bar in just a few minutes. Now, what you're looking at here, folks, is probably the most famous place in all of Balls Bridge, and this is the RDS, the Royal Dublin Society. It was founded in 1731 by the Dublin Philosophical Society and uh, to improve manufacturing, economic activity, and the creation of employment. And this building was acquired by the RDS in 1879, and it consists of 40 acres all told, within the whole complex. This is just one room you're looking at here. The only time I spent any time in Bulls is when I get any free tickets to exhibits at the RDS day. There you go. Yeah, now there's something going on here every single day at the RDS. As I say, there's 11 rooms in here. One of them, the main hall, hall holds up to 25,000 uh, people. So you got everything. To, today there's uh, two different exhibitions. There's the healthcare f job fair. You'll see it down there, the health fair job fair that's going on and then also you have uh 
the show, the Fesh show, the music festival. So there's a music festival going on here as well. So lots of stuff going on here in the RDS at all times. Um, now, the Eurovision Song Contest was held here, actually in a, another part of the RDS, just around the corner called Simmons Court. And uh, that it was, the, the song contest was held in 1988 when Switzerland won the uh, Eurovision Song Contest. And singing that night for Switzerland was none other than, for you Canadians, Celine Dion. So Celine Dion was representing Switzerland and she won the 1988 Eurovision contest, con Song Contest representing uh, Switzerland, right here at the RDS. So there you go, folks. Now, would you see Cloda? Come on. Hey, Cloda, good to see you. Judy, welcome. Melly, welcome everybody, folks. Just join us. Linda, how are you? Great to see everybody, folks. Now, Ireland has won more European Eurovision Song Contests than anybody else with seven wins. And as I said before, there's all kinds of events that take place right here at the RDS, such as like craft shows, travel shows, all kinds of exhibitions, concerts, uh, science shows, etc. The list goes on and on. So this is the go-to place to go for, I say, exhibitions and all that. I say, Gregory comes here when he gets a free ticket. I'm the same myself, Gregory. That's when I come to that, when I get a free ticket. Or I just hop over the railings, hop over the uh, styles and get in for nothing. It's terrible, isn't it? I don't like playing with that. Now, you usually get a free ticket. Someone will give you a ticket, you know? You always know somebody. So there you go. I'm going to cross the road here, folks. But this is a really, really busy road, Balls Bridge. People coming off after work here on a Friday evening. As I say, it's, uh, it's after 5.30 now. So this is... Uh... Now, don't do, so do this at home, folks. There's a red light, but I'm going anyway because there's no cars coming. Absolute disgrace, I know. Is it named Balls Bridge? Because there was lots of dances... Balls, no. Great question, though, uh, Shelly. I'm going to tell you. That, give me a, a minute, and I'll tell you, because I'm going to show you a bridge up here. And I'm going to tell you the reason why it's called Balls Bridge. But well, that's a good question. Having lots of trouble with connection, Paula. Paula, refresh. Come out and come back in. How's it, how's it for everybody else? How's the connection for everybody else, folks? Please let me know. <sighs> Have a look at this building over here, folks. This is a brand new building, just built. And this is the, it's good for everybody. That's great. Fantastic. Amy, good to see you. Janice, how are you? Michael, good to see you. This is the new head office for uh, Facebook right here. Just been built. I think it took about two and a half years to build. Just, it's almost completed. So they're moving from a, their original location down by the uh, Silicon Dock, as we call it here in Dublin, to this location here in Balls Bridge. Now, there's 14 pubs, let's say, 47 restaurants, 14 pubs in Balls Bridge. This is the largest of all the uh, pubs, and it's called the Horse Show House because there's a huge horse show that takes place in the RDS every year. I'll explain that to you when we get around to the corner to the RDS. But have a look at our beer garden, folks. Mad Mad Madigan Square Garden. Not Madison Square Garden, Madigan Square Garden. And this is probably the largest... Uh, beer garden in, in, in Dublin. It stretches all the way back. You've only seen a little but the inside part of it. But it goes all the way back. And the Madigan Group, they, they have about seven pubs around Dublin. And this is their, basically their headquarters of the seven pubs. Most of the other pubs are in the city of Dublin. This we're talking about, we're about a kilometre and a half. Literally only about two kilometres at most from Dublin City, on the south side of the city. And this is the head office of the Madigan Group in a listed building, a beautiful Victorian building right here. And as I say, they got seven pubs, and I think they have a few coffee shops as well. So the listed building right there is theirs. And the largest pub in Balls Bridge, Madigan's, with their Madigan Square Garden. Not Madison Square Garden, Madigan Square Garden. Here's, we're coming up to the little village here of, uh, now all the Dublin villages in the suburbs and so forth, they're pretty small, they're not really large. Not like your villages in the US and Canada. They'd be the same size of our towns, your villages. And uh, 
So this right here, and most of the places in the village are pubs and restaurants. As well, as I say, 47 restaurants, 14 pubs. Now, someone was asking how to get its name. So we're coming up here to the bridge here, folks. And uh, this area around the 1600s was owned by a man called Ball. Ball was his last name, Mr. Ball. He owned all the land around here. It would have been all agricultural land back then. And they built this bridge here in the uh, 18, uh, I think it was 18, 1791, they built this bridge. And of course, they had to call it Ball's Bridge. So they called the town or the village Ball's Bridge after Mr. Ball, who owned the whole area. And there's the bridge right there. These cars are walking over. There's a river underneath this bridge called the Dodder, the second largest river in Dublin after the Liffey. Some great, great pubs here, folks. Paddy Cullens, he's an original footballer that played for St. Cats. He is the original Dublin footballer, played for Dublin GA team. Paddy Cullen was the goalkeeper. He owned this pub for a long time. Doesn't own it anymore, Paddy Cullen. You got Crows of Balls Bridge with the, uh, the Guinness logo there and the, uh, the harp, say. It's a national symbol of Ireland. And they got Mary Max. Three great pubs right here. Now there's a game on here. Leinster. Leinster rugby. So Leinster is uh, one of the... Leinster is one of the provinces of Ireland. There's, uh, of course, four provinces of Ireland. Leinster, Ulster, Munster and Connacht. So the Leinster rugby team is a club team here in Dublin. And uh, they're the most successful club team in all of Europe. How's it going, boss? What time is the game at? 25 to 8. So there you go. 25 to 8, the Leinster game starts. And uh, as I say, they're the most successful rugby club team in Europe. And they've won uh, so many of the big championships, including the Heineken Cup. Over the last 12 years or so, they've won the Heineken Cup four times. And they won the Pro 14 tournament, I think, on six different occasions. So as I say, they're really, really successful. Um, here's a lovely, like all these... The libraries here in Ireland, most of them, there's very few modern libraries here in Dublin or throughout Ireland. Here's another old one dating back to uh, the late 1800s, Balls Bridge Library. I should be on the other side of the road to be able to show you that property, I'm too close to it. But we're going to move on. Now, as I mentioned, the RDS right there, I showed you the front part of the RDS. But the RDS consists of over 40 acres. And inside the RDS, you have uh, lots of events that take place. Not just in the front part, but in the back part as well. One of the biggest events is the Dublin Horse Show, which takes place every August here in Ireland. And all the best show jumpers, horses from around the world, come to compete at this, I think it's a four-day festival. And it's the biggest prize money in all of show jumping anywhere in the world. It's, it dates back to, uh, it started in um, 1864, the Dublin Horse Show. And in 1926, the audience held for the first time the Aga Khan Trophy, which is the biggest trophy um, at the moment. I think there's seven different countries compete for it. You have to qualify to be part of the Aga Khan Cup. This is uh, the grounds right here. This security probably don't like me zooming in. This is all private grounds. You're not allowed anywhere near her. If I was to go in here, I'd have to have, to have a ticket for the Leinster match. Wouldn't let you in. So there's the uh, show grounds right there. There's just parts and there's more beyond as well. But as I said, uh, 1926 was the first time they held the Aga Khan Trophy, which is the biggest trophy. And uh, among the show jump, you get uh, seven countries represented. Each country has four riders, four jockeys or whatever, and four horses. And uh, obviously the ones with the least amount of faults, obviously the, the least amount of hitting the uh, the barriers or whatever, wins the competition. And last year, folks, guess who won? 2022, the team that won, Ireland. 
we won it in a in a, a ride off against the French. The Irish won it, and it was the first time we'd won since 2015. Although it wasn't on in 2020, 2021 due to COVID. But as I say, uh, we won last year, but we still haven't won the most. I think we've won the Aga Khan Trophy uh, 26 times or 27 times. But the British, the Great Britain team, I think I've won it 34 times the most. If you win three consecutive Aga Khans, you get to keep the trophy. And we won it three times consecutively back in the 70s, I think. So we got to keep the trophy. Thank you, Audrey. Appreciate it. Must be your internet connection. What's the story, folks? Who's having internet problems? It's, how's it for everybody else, folks? I'm getting green light. I mean, I'm, I've, I've got the full uh, signal right here. Yeah, Dublin Castle. I was there today. I had a, a group of 34 Italians today. I got loads of groups from Italy. They're students. I'm doing another one tomorrow, another one Sunday. I did another one today. 30 students showing them all around Dublin. We're at Dublin Castle as well. It's a great spot. Okay, great stuff, Moran. Great, thank you. Okay, no issues here. It's all good. This is the Donner River right here, folks. And this is the second largest river in Dublin. It's like 26 kilometers. It starts in uh, the Dublin Mountains or the Dublin Wicklow Mountains. So close to the border of Dublin Wicklow Mountains, the Pure Mountains, and makes its way all the way down here. And just about less than a kilometer away behind me is where it ends. Less, maybe three quarters of a kilometer away from me behind me is where it ends. What is the name of the river again, Dave? Dodder, D-O-D-D-E-R. The three main rivers in Dublin are the Lithia, of course, that runs through the center of Dublin city. That's the largest. And then um, you have the Dodder here on the south side of the city. And then on the north side of the city, you have the Tolka, T-O-L-K-A, Tolka. They're the three big rivers in Dublin. Dodder, that's right, Shelley, you got it. Now we're going to make our way into this lovely park called uh, Harbour Park. These are some of the apartments around Harbour Park. And there's a hotel around the corner as well. Now, this is prime real estate. There's lots of big name companies that are located in Balls Bridge. And uh, it's also a very nice neighborhood. So the real estate is just through the roof. Now, the real estate here in this country is just, it's, it's, it's mind boggling how expensive everything is as regards property so most people can't afford to buy so they rent even young people with great jobs making a hundred grand plus a year cannot afford to buy a house in Dublin because you've got to put 20 percent down and any decent house will cost you about a million euros a five hundred thousand house would be small will be a small house these are two bedroom two and three bedroom apartments Mostly two bedrooms. The rent here will cost you about between three and three thousand five hundred a month. This is how expensive stuff are. This is one of the big tour companies in Ireland, CIE Tours. Ouch, says Shelley. Yeah. How is it compared to New York City cost of living? I'd say it's pretty comparable. I know you are, New York City is absolutely huge money as well. It's gigantic money. But we're getting there. We're getting there. Getting very close to it. I've got a hat in my head and it's fallen off me because the wind is so strong. This is a, a lovely hotel, the Herbert Park Hotel, right beside the park that we're going into next. As the wind is just howling here, folks. I hope you can't hear it because I have my uh, microphone plugged in and it's supposed to be wind resistant. I don't know if you can hear it or what. It's more reasonable outside of Dublin. Oh, yeah. It's very, down the country, it's much cheaper. You have an awful lot of Dublin people. They sell their houses when they retire and they move down the country because they can sell their house for a million euros and buy a lovely house down the, the uh, rural Ireland for 250 grand and put 750 grand in their pocket, you know what I mean? So it's well worth it for them to retire down the country than stay here as it's just so, so expensive. <sighs> Yes, it is very audible. Wow, and I thought we were expensive. Ontario, Canada. Oh, it's crazy expensive here. Dublin now. 
not so much the rest of the country, although it is. Like places like holiday resorts like Killarney are really, really expensive. I'm waiting for my hat to fall off my head because it's so windy and my hat isn't uh, secure. And it's like a, it's a woolen hat. So it keeps my head warm because I'm not kidding you, it is absolutely... The wind is crazy. This is a beautiful park, Harbour Park right here. It was uh, established in 1903 and was given to the people by Sidney Herbert, who's, who's it named after, Sidney Herbert, and he was the Earl of Pembroke. And this was part of his estate at one time. But in 19, and in 1907, so he gave, he willed it to the people of Dublin and the people of this area, as I say, as a public park in 1903 in his will. And uh, in 1907, there was a huge event that took place here. It was the great exhibition that took place here, and it lasted for six months. Three million people attended it. It was like a huge, like, uh, manufacturing type of exhibition. There was companies from all over the world that were selling their, their gears, were selling their different uh, products and so forth. And it all took place here in Herbert Park. Now, Herbert Park is, uh, it's, I think it's 32 acres all told, but it's split in half. So there's one, this half right here, and there's more over this way, all the football fields and so forth. A lovely pond right here. And then it's separated by the road, Harbour Park Road. And then you have some more fields on the other part of the park on the other side of the road. Mostly where they play their tennis and bowling, like uh, lawn bowling, tennis, kids' playground and all that as well. The bubble has burst and mortgage rates have gone up. I see sunshine, says Shelley. I see it as well, but... I can't be too optimistic because here, that can change in literally one minute. It could be all different. There's loads of great wildlife here in Herbert Park. The wildlife at Herbert Park, and it shows you some there. there. And the, the, they also have the pond here is uh, like a breeding, uh, a breeding ground for carp. And they can grow up to two feet altogether. So you've got all kinds of great bird life here. You've got the goldfinch, robin, wood pigeon, moorhen, great tit. Blackbird, sparrow, yellow finch, and grey finch. And right around here as well, see where the gazebo is and all that. All around here on a Sunday in this area, you have, uh, let me just zoom in here, the history of Herbert Park. You have a farmer's market on Sundays. It's a really good farmer's market. So here is just a look at the history of Herbert Park, the history of the landscape of Herbert Park. I hope you can see all that. You can take a postcard photograph of it and read about it later or whatever. I've after given you most of the history anyway. Excuse me for sniffing. I got a, I got a cold. I've always got a cold. It's terrible. There's great uh, tree trails here as well. Absolutely amazing uh, tree trail here at Harbour Park. And... Uh, there's a, it's actually a, a, a nature trail. So they're all natural trees around here. And there's like 15 species of natural trees grown here in Ireland. Native to Ireland, most of them. Including like, you got the hazel, you got the yew tree. Now, there's some of the yew trees around here, folks. And there's a nice uh, weeping willow tree right here by the pond. But the uh, yew trees around here, oh, look, this one's falling down. Look at that. This one has fallen down. It's only a matter of time. Look at the kids getting up. He's trying to knock it over. Look. This is a disgrace. Leave that tree alone, son. See it? It's falling over. If he's not lucky, it might fall right now. Landlord's marky because vacancy rates are so low. It's still alive, though. Yeah, it is. No, it's, it's got a laugh. Leaves on it and stuff, so it's well alive. I will probably live for another 20 years, more. But anyway, you got the holly, you got the yew trees. Now, some of the yew trees around here, I was about to say, are a thousand years old. And they're natural. They were, would have been dropped here by bird seeds or whatever. They weren't planted by humans, which is quite extraordinary. 
as you see this lovely little pond it's a really nice place to sit have a cup of coffee during the finer months or even when it's not so fine it's still a nice walk people come on daily walks around here obviously bring their dogs for a walk the dogs love the parks hi Catherine good to see you Madison welcome One bedrooms went from 600 to 1500. Similar to here. It's not that far off. It's crazy. In Dublin only, as I said before. Liesl, how are you? Welcome. So, uh, yeah, you got holly trees, yew trees, Scots pine, ash, birch, hazel, alder, willow, weeping willow, hawthorn, elder, oak, aspen, sherry, mountain ash, and apple trees. Don't be robbing any of the apples, please. There we go. So it is a lovely, lovely park. Obviously, especially when it, in the finer weather. And this is only one half of it, I say. And there's the football fields behind these trees right here as well. And then I say on the other side, it's uh, the children's playground. And there's also a bowling alley. Like a, sorry, a, a bowling green. Outdoor bowling green. Hi, doggy. And uh, there's also tennis courts and everything as well across the road over there. Now, as I said before, right around here, every Sunday morning, there is uh, a farmer's market. The farmer's market would be all natural products, all Irish-themed products, like cheeses from all over the country, from the farmlands all over the country, uh, all kinds of breads, home-baked bread, all kinds of tweeds and woolen products and everything. It's a really, really good farmer's market. It's one of the better farmer mar farmer's markets. But it's only ever on the Sunday, just one day of the week. And it's only on for about four hours. So I think it starts at like 10.30 and it finishes around 2.30. So, Moran, thank you. Moran, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Welcome, Nancy. Madison, Lisa. As we make our way, folks, down into the heart of Bald's Bridge, as we've had been so lucky, because when I start the tour, I've shown you the clouds, and it looked as if it was going to absolutely lash out of the heavens with rain, and it didn't. Well, not yet, anyway, because the blue skies are coming out. Thank you, Claude. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. So this is the other side of the uh, park right here. As I say, it's... Uh, 32 acres all told. So it's probably about 16 acres. No, there'll be less on this one. This one has about 10 acres. The other one has about 26. But there's also uh, all-weather soccer pitches as well. Tennis courts. And I say bowling greens as well. But we're going to make our way a little bit further down here. I'm going to bring you onto one of the really nice leafy streets here in uh, Balls Bridge. As I say, it's the most expensive real estate in all of Ireland. D4, as we know it as, Dublin 4, D4, Balls Bridge. And uh, so it's only well-to-do people that would live around these areas or people that have very well-paying jobs, but mostly company owners and what have you. But Balls Bridge also has 28 of the world's embassies around here as well. And most of these embassies, they look like mansions, they're huge. And uh, some of them are like in uh, their homes as well as slash homes slash uh, embassies. Let's say 28 of the world's embassies right here at Balls Bridge. Welcome D and Beth. Good to see us. Hope you're having a good day and welcome to Balls Bridge. Oh, I wanted to show you this, folks, because uh, a lot of the Dublin public parks, especially the ones that are run by the OPW, Office of Public Works, that run most of the parks and all the big sites in Ireland, all the heritage sites and cultural sites. So uh, this would be the park superintendent's home. And they would get to live here for absolutely free. No money whatsoever, cost them, for, cost them free to live here, which I think is fabulous, as they maintain the park and the running of the park. But they get to live in a lovely Victorian home like this. There's another one that's even bigger than that, in, uh, if you may have been on my... St. Stephen's Green Park Tour, which is in the heart of Dublin City, just off Grafton Street. And there's a lovely, uh, a lovely house in there. 
where the superintendent lives. Really nice Victorian style home. Welcome, Brandy. Good to see you. This is more of the village you're seeing right here. You've seen a little bit before. It was uh, more where the restaurants and bars were. And if you look over there, you'll see uh, Sherry Fitzgerald. Now, remember I was telling you, this is the number one real estate in Ireland. Sherry Fitzgerald are the largest realtors in Ireland. So they're the ones that are selling all these homes for this huge amount of money. And Sherry Fitzgerald have locations all across Ireland and by far the biggest realtors in Ireland, Sherry Fitzgerald. Most of their, the homes they're selling are upmarket homes, very wealthy homes. And the lesser known uh, realtors will be selling the cheaper homes, if you can call it cheap. Because there ain't no cheap, folks, let me tell you. Not here. This is a big uh, hub, this road. It's uh, Merrion Road. And it goes all the way from here to Black Rock in Dublin as well. Now, I want to show you this. Ireland is famous, obviously, for its uh, Celtic crosses. And here's one right here. And this one is dedicated to those that lost their lives in the 1916 Easter Horizon. And uh, a gentleman used to live around here, and he was involved in 1916 Easter Rising. His name is Eamon de Valera. He was three-time Taoiseach, a Prime Minister of Ireland, and he was a two-term President of Ireland. The Presidents in Ireland uh, served one seven-year term, so two terms, so he's 14 years he lived. And uh, this is unveiled by him for his colleagues for uh, in rem remembrance of his colleagues in the 1916 Easter Rising, because he was one of the leaders himself. And he was the only leader of the 1916 Easter Rising that was not executed. Eamon de Valera, he was not executed. He was the only one. He went on to live, he was 94 years old, didn't die until 1973. So he's probably about 26, 27 years old in 1916. And he escaped the death penalty or execution. Why did he? Why did was he not executed along with the other leaders? Anybody know why he was not executed along with the other leaders of the 1916 Easter Rising? Anybody know? I've told this before on other shows. There you go, Terry, born in the USA. Who's that? Bruce Springsteen. And by the way, Bruce Springsteen's coming here. You know, I just showed the RDS Stadium. Well, that's huge for concerts. And Bruce Springsteen's coming this July for three sold-out performances. They were sold out within an hour. He's hugely popular here, born in the USA. Great, great. Now, talking about the USA, folks, have a look what you have in front of you here. This is the United States Embassy here in Dublin. It's a beautiful, beautiful building, as you can see, oval-shaped and uh, very attractive. It was uh, built between 1962 and 1964. Originally, the, uh, the American Embassy was at the Phoenix Park. You may have been on a tour of the Phoenix Park with me before. It's the largest walled park in Europe. It's 1,750 acres. So right here is America, folks. And there's the American flag. That is the American Embassy here in Dublin. It's a circular building, oval-shaped, as you can see, designed by an American, John Johansson, and an Irishman, Michael Flynn, and built by the Crampton Brothers. The Crampton Brothers are probably the, the oldest construction company here in Ireland. They date back to 1879. And they built loads and loads of homes and buildings and commercial buildings as well as homes throughout Ireland. They're a huge company. So right here, now folks, what's amazing is that I am only about 15, 15 meters from America. Because once I go through these gates and into this building, I'm in America. Did you know that? because it's American territory, right here. So I'm very, very close to America, right here, 15 feet away. I came here in 1985 to get my green card to go to America. And then I spent 25 years in the great US of A. But I had to come here to do uh, my interview. And before that, I had to have a medical report, making sure that I was, didn't have any diseases or anything like that. So there you go. You could ask for political sign. <laughs> a nicely maintained villain. And then over here, 
we have uh, another embassy. There's low, let's say there's 28 embassies all told throughout uh, Balls Bridge. And here's another one here, the Kenyan embassy, right here. Embassy of Kenya. Do we have anybody from Kenya on here? No disease like communism. <laughs> Kenyan embassy right there. People are looking out the window. What's he doing? What's that fella doing? Yeah, there's lots and lots of uh, embassies around the area. That... Now, there's another area that I've actually shown these embassies before on uh, a road called Aylesbury Road. And that's where the majority of the embassies are. And on that road, you have the Norwegian, the Swiss, the Polish, the Lithuanian, the Chinese, the Belgium, Argentinian. Uh, just lots and lots of different uh, embassies throughout that street. Now, over here, this is like Clyde Road right here. And uh, as I say, one of the richest roads. Actually, this one right here. It's Clyde Road right here, folks. And this is the third richest road. Clyde Road, there's the name of it. The third richest road in all of Ireland. And you can see some of the beautiful homes here. They're actually, they're mansions. So your doctors and your big time lawyers, solicitors, whatever you, they'd be living here. Maybe a few politicians. You know they have money. Now, if the homes get bigger and bigger the further you go up the street. But they're beautiful red bricks, as you can see, in the Victorian style. Probably built around between like maybe 1850 to 1900, but very, very well maintained. Lots of uh, upkeep, refurbishments, remodel jobs done on these homes to keep them looking the way they do. Irish people have a sense of pride in their homes. And that's one thing that they're always doing is uh, improving the homes that they live. <laughs> now, right here, we got this beautiful church. It's called St. Bartholomew's Church. And this church uh, dates back to 1864. It's a Presbyterian church. And here at this church, the parents of um, Alan Turing, 1867, St. Bartholomew's Church, and the parents of Alan Turing, I think it was in 1907, they were married in this church. Alan Turing's, you obviously know, the Enigma Code. He broke the Enigma Code or whatever, which uh, if he hadn't have the war, the Second World War would have been prolonged, and it wasn't because of his... Uh, his deeds, he changed all that. And uh, as I say, his parents were born here. His mother was from County Clare in Ireland, in the west, count, west uh, of Ireland. His father was British. So they moved shortly after they got married here. They moved back to uh, Britain. And Alan Turing grew up there. What was the great movie? The Enigma Code, wasn't that the movie? Well, Alan Turing, great movie. Now, he had a horrific life because I think he was a homosexual or whatever, and... It was frowned upon at that time, and he was, they tried to sterilize him or something, and it didn't go right. Very sad. There's some more, uh, the Korean embassies right over here as well, behind them trees. You might be able to see the flag. That's not the Korean embassy there, but there's one, the Korean embassy just before it. A few other ones there. He ended up being jailed, yeah, I think that was the case. I don't know a whole lot about the story. I remember seeing bits of the movie, I didn't see it all. I must say, uh, Watch it sometime. We're going to uh, make our way down here to another street called um, Shelburne Road. Down here. And there's some places of interest I want to show you. Down this street as well. How's everybody doing, folks? Here's another angle to look at the, uh, the wonderful... The wonderful American Embassy here in Balls Bridge. There you go. Now we're going to make our way, I said, down to 
a different part of the lovely uh, village of Ballsbridge. And uh, eventually, we're going out to Lansdowne Road. And Lansdowne Road is where the Aviva Stadium is. It used to be known as the Lansdowne Stadium. And it's where all the Irish rugby and soccer matches, football games are played. Not the national sport of Gaelic and Hurling. They're played out in the Crow Park Stadium, which is by far and away the biggest stadium in Ireland. It's like 83,000 seat stadium. It's Crow Park on the north side of Dublin. It's where we have play all our Hurling and Gaelic football matches. And it is the national stadium of Ireland. The one down here, it's not the national stadium, but it's where we play all our international football and rugby games. And last weekend, last Saturday, we beat England at this stadium, we're going to show you in a little bit, to win the Six Nations Championship, the actual the Grand Slam. We beat every other team. And we're the number one team in rugby in the whole entire world at this present time. Ireland, a little country like Ireland, number one rugby team in the world. Favourites to win the World Rugby World Cup, which is taking place in September in France. And we are the favourites. The French are ranked number two. They'll be second favourites. They're a really good team, although we beat them in the Six Nations this year. But they're going to have home field advantage. They're going to be very difficult to beat as they have the best player in the world. Number nine, the scrum half, DuPont, Antoine DuPont. What a player. Unbelievable. This is a really great restaurant here. It's called Rollies. It's been here since 1982, but it's always packed out. The food is just absolutely outstanding. Terrific restaurant. It's got over 80 staff members in here. It's a very big restaurant. You only see a little part of it there. People are probably saying, don't be putting my your camera while I'm eating my food. Rollies, yeah, great restaurant. It's really fantastic. Top notch. There's a bar up here called the Bridge Bar. Of course, named after the bridge right here. There's lots of bars throughout Ireland and they're called the Bridge Bar. The Bridge. This bar has been here since 1859. And this bar is actually, uh, it's actually owned by uh, three rugby players, international rugby players who play for Ireland. They're retired international rugby players. Ulster Bank, they're moving. They're going out of business in Ireland. They're owned by the Bank of Scotland. Now we're going on to Sherwell Road here. I'm going to show you some uh, neat stops here. Maybe I'll put my, my phone in the window here so you can see the prices of this real estate as I run across the road to beat the traffic. Let me put... See what some of these are going for. And that's cheap. That's just an apartment of 450,000. Uh, 725,000 for an apartment. These are not homes. These are apartments. Let me get the rich places. Let me get the rich ones. Here. Here's a home. Look at this. 1.350 for a home. It's not both of them homes now. It's only the one there to the left. One, one million. Look at this. This home, two, nearly three million for that home right there. And there's two sides, so it's probably the only one, it's only the one to the left. Looks like it's two homes there. The one to the left is three million, nearly three million. Unbelievable. This is Shelburne Road, one of the main roads coming into Bald's Bridge. Over here, you've got a really, really nice little post office. And this post office dates back to 1881. There's a lot of old post offices throughout Ireland, of course. And Ireland has the oldest, the oldest post office in the whole entire world. The oldest continuously operated post office in the world is the GPO on O'Connell Street, the general post office. But you can get a lot of these beautiful little Victorian post offices, and this one's from 1881. Put in an offer for you, all right, Michael? Send me over the cash. They only accept cash, okay? None of that uh, electronic stuff. 
no electronic payments, cash. You can give the cash to me, I'll give it to them. But I have to take my commission out first, okay? Uh, as I say, this is a well-to-do area, so you have Balls Bridge Motors right here, and they specialize in Mercedes. Ask and price for a vehicle here, 70 grand plus. The cheap ones are 70 grand. I'm telling you, it's like real upmarket. There you go. So there's a lot of mixture here of old and new, like there is on many of the streets today in Dublin and the areas in Dublin and the suburbs. You got old and new mixed together. Old and new. Some ancient buildings like 150 years old and other ones that just been built over the last few years. So it's a great contrast if you like. Starbucks, of course, we have here. They're all over the place. There's two brothers that have the franchise for Starbucks in Ireland. They were told when they were set up by all the so-called experts, you're crazy, there's already enough coffee shops here. You're not gonna do any well. You're not gonna do good in Ireland, but coffee shops like Starbucks are not gonna do well. Well, guess what? They are absolutely flying, doing unbelievable business, and they're all over the place. Uh, because we are, believe it or not, folks, we only have a small population here, but per head of population, we're the second biggest coffee drinkers in the whole entire world, Ireland is. In a place that 30, 40 years ago, there was one or two coffee shops in the city of Dublin. Today, they're on every street corner, everywhere, tons of them. One of my favorites is this one right here, Butler's Chocolate Cafe. You may have heard me talking about this particular coffee shop, cafe, on my Grafton Street tour. Now, they're a they have a chocolate factory, Butler's, and in the late 1980s, their chocolates at their chocolate factory was not selling too well. So they opened up a coffee shop on South William Street, adjacent to Grafton Street, just as a way of selling and of promoting their chocolates. But not only did our chocolate start flying off the shelves, but their coffee was selling like crazy as well. It was so successful. Today, they have probably about 20 shops all across Dublin and some of the suburbs as well. Now, it might be, that might, might be low ball now. They may even have about 30. It's a roaring trade. They sell chocolates out of the, uh, the coffee shops here. You can see some of the chocolates in the window. Obviously, we've got Easter coming up, so they'll have extra ones as well. You see the bunnies right here. Oh, it's all chocolate bunnies. They look nice, don't they? They're beautiful. And then uh, some great displays of chocolate here as well. Now, this is the only place that you can come to any coffee shop in Ireland where you will get a piece of chocolate with your cup of coffee or your cup of tea, whichever you desire. So, And you've got your choice of about 60 different chocolates. So you get a piece of chocolate. It is wonderful. Welcome, anybody who's just joined us. Good to see us all. Unfortunately, we've only got about five minutes left of the tour. Now, I might have mentioned to you guys before that all the big tech companies are here in Ireland, in Dublin especially. Okay. you got Facebook and you got Google and you got Twitter and you got LinkedIn. All the big major players, their European headquarters are right here in Dublin. But most of them companies would have came here over the last 10, 15, 20 years. But the original big tech company, or computer company, if you like, was IBM. And this is their original building right here in Dublin, the IBM building right here. And they've been here, folks. The IBM, I don't know, they had the American flag there, and the flagpole, where is it? It's gone. Anyway, they've been here, believe it or not, folks, since 1956, by far and away, the oldest computer company in Ireland. I think they're the oldest computer company in America as well. I think they were the first to sell PCs. I think IBM was the original players with PCs and laptops and what have you before. You had all Dell and all them other companies. So anyway, I'm, I'm thinking they've had to close down this building if they did. It's only over the last couple of weeks. The last time I did this tour was about a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago, and I was up and running, but it looks like they've taken the name down and everything. Looks like it's closing. Since 1956 has been here, looks like it's closing. Oh well, they go back long before PCs, yeah. Oh, they're, yeah, I mean, they're around forever. 
but looks like they're taking the sign down at IBM and Everton. Looks like they, they must have moved out. If they did, it was only two months ago. They got the Israeli flag here, so I'm thinking the Israeli uh, embassy was not here before, but looks like they've moved here. It's the Israeli embassy right there. Looks like it was not there. That wasn't there a month ago either. They must have moved from a different location. I'm trying to think where the Israeli embassy was before. I can't remember. Anyway, we're going to make our way, folks, down to uh, Lansdowne Road. Catholic Joyce. The majority of Irish people, about 95% in Southern Ireland, are Catholics, Roman Catholics. In the north of Ireland, in the six counties, it's split about 50-50. 50% 50 /50. are Protestant, 50% are Catholic. In Southern Ireland, in the 26 counties, like we are here in Dublin, it's about 95% Catholic. About 3% Protestant and 2% lots of others. Now, them numbers may have changed over recent years because we have a lot of immigrants here to Ireland with all different religious persuasions. So I'm sure it's all a lot different now. It's probably only about 90% Catholic now. It's probably about 6% Muslim, I'd say. I'd say they're the second biggest religion would be Muslim in Ireland. And then maybe Protestants. Maybe Protestants first and then Muslims. They are tearing down our IBM buildings in Endicott, New York, where I'm originated. I used to live right near there, Linda. I lived in uh, White Plains. I remember there, uh, I lived in White Plains opposite the gallery in a beautiful apartment right there back in the uh, early 1990s. And uh, not far from there, you had uh, the IBM facility. <sighs> It's Westchester County, isn't it, Endicott? Well, I know uh, Rastafarians, no, there's not too many Rastafarians. No man, three dollar. No woman, no cry. Bob Geldof, well, well Bob, uh, Bob Marty, one of the greatest regular sinners. Shelburne Road, that's the name of that road we are just on. It's more in the New York Southern tier, is it? Okay. I know that uh, IBM also had uh, a big facility in White Plains, which is in Westchester County. Lately, they said the Catholics have taken over. Oh, in the north, in the north of Ireland. Yeah, maybe it could be like 52% now. I think there might be the majority in Northern Ireland now but 100% majority here. This is Lansdowne Road, another road with some beautiful homes on it. And uh, that's the Lansdowne Stadium right there. And that's a fairly new stadium. It, it dates back to 1879, but it was uh, torn down in 2000 and, I think it was 2006. It was torn down and rebuilt. It wasn't completed until 2010. So the first time in history, rugby and soccer were played in Crow Park Stadium, which they used to forbid any foreign sports. If it wasn't an Irish sport, you weren't allowed to play in Crow Park. But I guess money talks and they uh, changed everything to accommodate the rugby international matches and the soccer international matches while this stadium was being built. Now it's built like one of the uh, American stadiums, like one of the NFL American stadiums. It looks exactly like an NFL stadium inside. You have uh, it's designed the exact same way. So I'm not sure who designed this, but I'm sure it's somebody that designed some of the NFL stadiums. It's a 53,000 seater, 30,000 less than Crow Park, the National Stadium of Ireland. Now we're coming up also here to Lansdowne Road Stadium. Sorry, Lansdowne Road Station. It's the Dart Station. Uh, the Dart, it goes through the middle of the city here. The Dart means Dublin Area Rapid oh, Transport. Yeah. It's, it's a train system and it goes uh, through the city of Dublin out into the northern suburbs from here to uh, the beautiful fishing village of Holt, 
and also the beautiful village of Malahide. And on the south side, when it's going the other way, out of the city, going south, it goes to the beautiful towns of Dunleary, Dorky, uh, Bray, Kleine, Bray, Greystones. Well, actually, Bray and Greystones are in County Wicklow. So there is the dart. They're very frequent. They come about... Uh, Thank you, Karen, for the tip. These come every uh, every 10 minutes or so, but you don't have to wait long for these, for the dart. But it's a beautiful coastal route. So if you ever do come to Dublin, it's well worth your while coming on uh, the dart and seeing all the beautiful... Uh, it's like you see what's known as the Irish Riviera going through Dorky and Kalini. It is exceptional. Here's a beautiful mural of a fox. And... Uh, Foxes are very, very common here in Ireland. They roam the streets at night. They used to be scared of people. They are no longer scared of people. They'll walk right by you and have no fear of people anymore. There's so many of them. They originally would have come down from the mountains. But it looks like they're, they're here now. They're our neighbours. Foxes. We don't get too many wild animals in this country, but that is one of them. It's the foxes. They're not dangerous. They're more scared of you than you are of them. Unless you corner them, you might have a, a fight on your hand if you corner them. So, folks, that's about all I've got for you today. Hope you enjoyed the tour. Thank you so much for coming on. Just to tell you a little bit about uh, coming up next week. Um, I'm doing, I'm trying to think what i got on Wednesday. Next Wednesday, I believe I'm doing uh, Raff Farnham Castle. So it's a new tour. So I hope you can join me for that. Raff Farnham Castle, Castle in the South of Dublin. Uh, that's on Wednesday. And next Thursday, I'm doing uh, Rat Mines. It's uh, the flatlands of Dublin, where there's lots of accommodation, flat accommodations and stuff, but it's a very famous part of Dublin. Just uh, over the bridge, over the, the Latouche Bridge, it's the first neighbourhood you come to outside the city of Dublin, is Rat Mines. So I hope you can join me for that. Thank you, Janice. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Great fun. Thank you, Clodagh. Thank you so much. Thanks, Carl. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, yeah, and then next Friday, folks, I'm doing Grattan Street, Dublin's most fashionable street. It's a great, you'll love this tour. It's a lot of fun, showing you all the great spots around Grattan Street, especially if you're coming to visit here. It will give you a highlight of what's going on uh, here in Dublin. So I hope you can join me for that. That will be, as I say, uh, I think it's a 4.30 next Friday. I think 2.30 next Thursday or next Wednesday is the Raff Farnham tour. And then next Thursday, oh, I'm trying to think what time that tour is at. Rap Mines, I think it's at 5.30 in the evening. Listen, folks, that's all i got for you. If you enjoyed the tour today, I'd really, really appreciate it if you can leave me a nice review. Um, also, follow my channel. That way you can get all the updates of my upcoming tours. And uh, I'll leave you as I love you. Slan Litagus Kareva Mila Mohammed. Thank you, folks. Slancha. Have a great day. See y'all. Take care. Going for a pint and a whiskey to heat myself up. As I let this person through.